Dublin's inner city have always had a vibrant mix of population, but now working class people are being forced out. Social housing is being run down and demolished, replaced with private development. I spoke to Gillian O'Brien from the North Inner City about what this means for her community and how they're fighting back. Gillian, tell me a little bit about what we're seeing here from your balcony. So if you look out here now, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cranes at the moment when I walk out my front door. And I suppose what we're seeing now is in the markets area or of Dublin City Central or the Northwest Inner City, as some people call it, is develop, mass development happening and the biggest homeless crisis this country is seeing. And the development that's happening is student accommodation and hotels. That's the only development that's happening here. And when I say student accommodation, my daughter's a student. Of course students have a right to study and live beside their colleges. These students' accommodation, the prices are starting at 2000 a month. Now, I don't know any mother or any parent that can afford to send their child up from Sligo or from Galway up to Dublin to DIT or Trinity and pay 2000 a month rent. So what we're seeing is Fine Gael's policy of leading the student accommodation out of the legislation that they brought in to protect supposedly rentiers. And what they can do is the private developers, that's why they're whacking up all the student accommodation is, they can rise the rent with a day's notice. And that's why student, and I suppose for me, it's, it's absolutely disgraceful what's happening in the biggest homeless crisis right now. And you're, you're from here, you grew up around here, so how, how do you think it has changed around here over the last few years? Well, it's completely changed. The markets area was always very unique in that. If you're coming from an evidence place, place, we always had a social mix. So we always had the working class in the flats and the houses. We have the law society, we have the businesses, and we have the street traders. So we've always had a vibrant social mix. We've always worked together. We've always, we've always got along. And what we're seeing now is that, that social mix is being tore apart. We're seeing the removal of the working class. We're seeing Dublin City Council facilitating the running down of working class uh, flat complexes and houses. We're seeing the private developers literally building hotels and pushing Dublin City Council in O'Devony Gardens gave away 70% of the land to private developers. And when I say land, that's Irish citizens' land. That's when I, and we should not be giving that to private developers. And, and what we're seeing then is the working class being pushed out. And the biggest thing for me around that is people need to understand is this happened in London. And what happened in London was the facilitation. It's a word called gentrification. When I heard that first, I was like, what does that mean? to gentrify an area and basically what it means is to push the working class out, remove the social housing, I first you'll see an influx of artisan bread shops, the middle class will come because they'd be able to afford the private apartments but then what you see and it's a replication of London and many other cities around Europe, the middle class are pushed out and only foreign private investors can afford to buy. So what I'm seeing right now, I grew up in this community and it's a beautiful community, it still has its heart. And what I'm seeing now is my community being torn apart and the people and the families that live here being pushed out. And the impact of that on any city is if you take out the community, you take out the heart, you take out the safety. So you're talking about removing the safety of the inner city, the, the families that live here that keep it safe and removing, I suppose, the homes. And that's to me, is not OK. And um Tell me a little bit more about the community and do you think that the community here is strong and par partially resisting some of this? I think, yeah, I think we've pockets what, what, what we've seen with, like, with, with the community. A lot of, a lot of us, uh, what we grew up, I grew up in, in this community and we have the markets and we all got employment from the markets. And what we see now is the facilitation of the markets. So we had the markets in Smithfield. Nearly everybody in this community got a job in the markets. It was your first job. The fruit markets are being sold. So that's our employment gone. Then a lot of us went into construction and into clean. The construction collapsed. What we're seeing now is from the construction that's happening, no local employment. So what we're seeing right now in my community is it's, yes, there is parts of the community that are very strong, but yes, there's parts of the community, like, ever, like all across Ireland, we're struggling because we've no employment. There's poverty, people are living day to day. But there's one thing I do know about this community, and Dublin City Council and the private developers are underestimating is we will fight back. We will fight back and 
where we're standing now is Constitution Hill and we're up for redevelopment at the moment and over my dead body and every other mother in this in this flat complex will they sell this land to private developers we have families living in this complex it's two bedroom flats we have three and four generations already living in here in overcrowding we have the biggest homeless crisis in this country and we refuse to allow them to give any more of our land to private developers for free and have you seen many people that you know being moved or basically forced to move out of this uh, community? Yeah, we have. What, what I've seen in, in Dominic Street, just down the road, and people will know it's just beside the ILAC Centre. If you walk out the Parnell Street way, you have Dominic Street, which was a vibrant um, flat complex. They came in with the social private partnership. They said that they'd knocked down the blocks of flats and that they went into private into partnership with the McNamara. They said they were going to give 60% to social housing, 40% private. McNamara, the flat complexes were knocked down. Mac McNamara, the developer who's back up and running now at profits, pulled out. And what you see now when you walk out of the ILAC Centre is grass bed land. So I know families that were told, move out to Blanchardstown, live here for a year, and you'll be moved back in. And they haven't been five years later. Just tell me, how are people in this community fighting back right now? So right now, Madeline, this community is fighting back. We have a group of residents, men, women and children, in Upper Dominic Street, who are fighting back against Walds, the developer, who's currently building a massive student site right on top of them to their, to their apartments. And their interior walls are not falling down. Their kitchen units are falling off the walls. They're working weekends, they're working all night. And these residents are being completely neglected. Their rights, building rights, I had to call out the Health and Safety Authority. And these residents are coming together with people before profit and they're fighting back. And it's going to be very soon, they're going to be out in protest. They're at the meeting three or four times and they're not letting this developer away with what, what he's doing. And Dublin City Council are not supporting the residents in any way, I want that named. And also over in Black Hall Street, over in Queen Street. We have a group of women, men and children over there. A hotel and student apartments is, they're being encaved in and right now they're fighting back there at having three meetings. They've sent letters to Dublin City Council, they've sent letters to the developer, they've put in objections to the, another round of, of, of apartment blocks going up. So the community is fighting back, which is absolutely amazing to see. And, uh, and it, it makes me, my heart glow to know that we're standing up and we're going to fight for our land because we need to protect this land for future generations.